Good morning, folks. Welcome to Fibertown. It is uh, June 19th, 2013 today. Um, this is episode 22. How are y'all doing? I'm great. Um, just sitting and knitting on my porch today. It's a little less hot and humid than usual. Um, so yay! I'm Emily, also known as Chain of Fools on Ravelry and Plurk. Um, I'm Fibertown on Instagram, MyFitnessPal, YouTube, and HipCast. And you can see um, this video on my blog, as well as other places, such as iTunes. And that is um, www.fibertown.blogspot.com, fiber with an R-E. Hey! Hey! How is everyone? Um, I'm great. I'm pretty good, considering I have what I'm calling my Spanish invasion descending on my home on Friday. Today's Wednesday. Half of my house is cleaned. I've borrowed beds. Oh, shoot. Just missed. Sorry. Uh, I've borrowed beds. I've washed floors. I have kids washing windows. So, yeah, it's been a little, little light on the knitting this week, but that's okay. Alice is here with me on the porch, pretending to be an idiot. She's not really. And, uh, yeah, she'll come and say hi later after she has killed her purple bone. I'm wearing purple today. This is my daybreak. Uh, Stephen West pattern. It's out of, um, I think I made the medium size. Woohoo, such gorgeousness. I used Malabrigo sock in Archangel. And Bunky Bobos is the purple um, in Purple People Eater. Purple. Can you see my purple? Somebody was saying they couldn't see my purple. Uh, there it is. So I can hide it. Or I can show it, depending on how I'm feeling. So yeah, it is a little chilly for June in DC. So got this on my shoulders. All right, I have a few welcomes and thank yous. Welcome to Green Hood, who's Becky from Virginia, Midlothian, Virginia. Hey, Becky. She's a local. Sort of local to me. Not really. But kind of, sort of. Sometimes I just make stuff up like that. Um, then Tawny won from Newcastle in the UK. And she has a hand-spun stash. Like, go see it. Because I need to, uh, I aspire to a hand-spun stash like that. Uh, thank you to Marianne, who is Miss Wooly Knits. She gifted me a pattern. It's the Milo pattern, and it's one of my cast-ons for the summer. It is a baby tunic tank top thingamajig. Um, so thank you so much. I, I'm really excited to cast that on. Alrighty. I was knitting along on my socks, and I, it's, it's a color change. Do that. I went from green to brown, and I forgot to do the slip stitch. So I'm going to be tinking back a wee bit um, before I can show you. I do have one show and tell today. If you're on Instagram, you've seen it already. It is something I'm calling my Franken shawl. And it is from Handspun. Remember that loop bat? Sorry, like sorry silk. Sorry, Charlie. Um, I decided I had enough knitting and I bound it off. And I blocked it, and I forgot the wonders of blocking. Blocking is so amazing. It makes the fabric soft. It makes it lie flat. It's just awesomeness. So can I even show you how big this is? This started out as the Whippoorwill by Karina Spencer. And I started doing random decreases and different places. Although it has the basic shape, it doesn't have the feather and fan of the whippoorwill. I did decide to do some just yarn over, knit two together rows, three in the gold and one down here at the bottom. I have like a little nugget of blue left over that just, oh, we're going to do double shawls. I could wear it like this, which I don't think I'll do. It's just too big for that. It was an exercise in knitting hand spun, and it was a real learning project for me. It just taught me I don't need to knit or to spin so thinly. But the colors are lovely. I love the bits of sari silk that are 
knitted into it, spun into it, and then knit up. And it does have some sparkle as well. Um, but I think it's mostly merino, bamboo, sorry silk, Angelina. I don't think I have the ball band. Can you see the sparkle at all? I really love the blue part where the sari silk is um, has the most contrast, I guess you could say. I, it really looks, reminds me of cherry blossoms or something. So that is the Frankenshawl. And I'm thinking about another shawl, but I'll show you guys that in a minute. It's time to cast on another shawl now that this one's off the needles. All right, I do have whips. The very first one is my mint chocolate chip socks. These are out of Fiber Nymph self-striping in the bounce space. I'm doing the vanilla bean pattern by Emily Locke O'Grady. She has a new last name now. And um, so uh, just a slip stitch heel flap. Um, so the way this works, it's more of a recipe. As you get to a new color, you slip one, knit one, all the way around until you get back to where you started slipping. And then you knit. And then when you get to the next one, you do the same. And it just adds a little interest. I think it does maybe suck the fabric in a little bit in places, but I've tried it on. It should be okay for me. Um, I'm doing my beloved heel gusset, bottom of the heel gusset. There it is. Just finished the gussets on these guys. Oh, let me see if I can... There it is. See the um, increases and decreases? So that's right on the bottom of your foot. They're a short leg. I just didn't think with everything going on that I could finish these by the end of June, which is my goal. But now that the gusset's done, I'm on the foot, they should go pretty fast. Mint chocolate chip. These are on Chowgu 40 inch cable, US one and a half. So I think that's a 2.5 millimeter. Um, it's a little bit tight going while you're doing the gussets as far as two, two socks on one long circular um, magic looping. It's a bit tight, um, but once you get back down to your regular, do all your gusset decreases and get back to your regular amount of stitches, it's fine. All right, so my second sock is the one I'm designing, and um, that is out of Hazelnut's Artisan Sock. This is good stuff. This is the sagebrush colorway. Looks like this. I have also turned a heel on this one. And I, I'm more thrilled with this sock all the time. There it is. I've, I've done the same bottom of the heel gusset on this. There it is. And it just fits me so nicely, nice and snug. So I'm onto the foot, and I think this is going to fly. I, these needles, for me, I can knit a sock fast with these needles. <clears throat> um, these are carbons, double points, and they're US one and, a half, one and a halfs as well. Seems to be my magic sock, um, sock needle size. My little sushi stitch marker. And this is, um, that, the sushi is from Wee Ones. You see that? And this one is from, oh gosh, I'm gonna, I can't remember the name of the Etsy shop that did these felted balls, but they're so cute. They're nice and light as far as stitch markers goes too. So yeah, onto the foot with all my socks. So kind of boring knitting, but I'm really happy with this design. I need a name for that particular sock design because I can't come up with anything. Both of the stitch patterns have ear. So you want to come up? Have ear in the title. So I don't know. If you have any good ideas, let me know. Alice is wanting to say hi. You want to come up? Oh, you're all dusty. You come up if you want to, but I'm not going to ask again. Alrighty. Um, that's it for whips. But I do have spinning. Alrighty. The Loop Spontaneous Spinning Clouds. Precious Metals. 
This has merino, nylon, angelina, and aluminum. That's a first for me. Two ounces of this. I two-plied it. Um, tried to get the colors to match as well as possible. And this is just not showing very well, but my ball winder didn't like me this day that I did this. So it goes from these, the gunmetal to um, a light, creamy color to this taupe. It goes on that side. This is going to become a cowl. My rugrats are home for summer break, and one of them is at the door saying, Mama, Mama, what? Yay, good job. See you later. Okay, I have a chore list for them before they can have any screen time at all, and my little guy is so gung-ho. This is day one of it, so we'll see how long that lasts. <sighs> spinning, spinning, spinning. I did do some sampling of my friend's singles. Remember I showed you last week? Um, I did about six ounces each of a two-ply, a true three-ply, and a Navajo ply. So she's knitting them. She's swatching to see which one she likes best. The two-ply is really, really thin, and I, there was energy still in it after I washed it. Like, it was, it was a wee twist to it. So, oh, we'll see what she likes best. So I told her to wash the swatch to see if it biased, um, if that energy was, oh, come here. Got something in your eye. To see if that energy was going to affect the fabric as it was knit up. Um, tour de fleece. I am starting to think about that. It starts right as my Spanish invasion leaves on June 30th. They leave that day. Um, <clears throat> so I've come up with a goal. And that goal is alpaca. Do you remember when I showed you all my basket of alpaca? Here it is. I've spun about a pound of it. Um, but I have 14 more ounces to go. Those 14 ounces um, is my goal for the Tour de Fleece. I'm going to join, I think, the Shocked team and a couple others. Um, I think you can join multiple teams, so that kind of sounds fun. So I think I'm going to do that this year. Usually during the Tour de Fleece, I'm traveling and I just have a spindle and it's just... It's, um, it's like major travel and it's not spinning friendly. Come on. Up. Up. So I'm excited this year. I'm going to be home most of the summer. We're not traveling. Travel is coming to us. And so I'll be doing the Tour de Fleece. Um, let me know if you guys have any cool teams. I went to the Tour de Fleece Ravelry group and it's just overwhelming. Page upon page of teams and, and all that good stuff. I know, baby. Come up and see me. Up. Up. Contrary little doggy. I have something up and coming. Um, this is going to be my fiber optic paint box gradient. Bitter lime to rose gradient. And this is MCN merino cashmere nylon. Um, 15 mini skeins of 30 yards each, 450 total yards. So I, these were little wee skeins, I unskeined them, I wound them into balls, and then I used something called the magic knot technique to join them. And um, it was kind of cool. There's a YouTube video by Jane Richmond that I checked out. And I don't know if I trust... I haven't knit it yet, so I don't know if I totally trust it. So I did the knots, but I didn't cut the ends in case I don't want to go that route. I just want to go traditional weave in your ends route. Here it is, though. All 15 skeins that transition from one color to another to the next in one big soft cake of yarn. Um... I think my project of choice, I've gone back and forth on this, is going to be a wingspan. I knit it last summer out of some hand spun, and it was too small. Like, I loved, loved, loved knitting it, and it was just too small. So I want to make a gigantic one. I think it would get a lot of use because it could be very 
um, scarf-ish. It's not a very wide shawl. Here's an example of it. Um, that's without the points blocked out pointy. Here's one where it's pointy, but too short. It goes around your neck one time. I think I can get excellent coverage with 450 yards. Come on, up. Do you want to, I'll give you a cookie if you come up. So that is coming on the needles as soon as my um, stripy socks are done. That's it today. It's a shorty. Um, as I said, there's just a lot going on here, um, but it's all good. It, for me, it's going to be 10 days of massive amounts of cooking and entertaining and dealing with um, three languages, because um, some of these folks are French speakers as well. Um, so yeah, imagine going out to a restaurant with um, people who don't speak English mostly. One of them does speak French and Spanish, and translating the menu, doing all the ordering, it's pretty exhausting. Um, but my husband and I are no stranger to this. Our wedding was, it was like a UN of interpreting and translating. And Alice, what's wrong, baby? So anyway, um, just keeping everyone happy for 10 days, and entertained, and fed, and doing their laundry and cleaning up after them. Come here, sweet. I know. Up. Up. Stay. Oh, that's my good girl. Oh. She's being all funny bunny. Say hi to everybody. <laughs> this is the squirrel lookout. Squirrel. Do you see any squirrels or birds? And this, she's going to get a bath because she's staying. So yeah, there's just a lot of little details to take care of. Alice is going to have a bath. Mwah. She thinks that's a huge insult when she's bathed. But she's pretty good about it. She's a good girl. You a good girl? Yeah. Are you so good that I should um, give you a cookie? Should I give you a cookie? Are you that good? I guess so. Oh, little Al. So... Alice and I are gonna um, take off now. You get down. No, you're not getting down. Okay. We are going to um, see you guys first week of July. That's hard to believe. And until then, have a fantastic time with your knitting and spinning. And um, yeah, keep in touch. I'll try to keep sane. All right, guys. See you then. Bye bye.